God's anointing. The little shepherd boy who would become king had God's anointing. Welcome. We're in 2 Samuel chapter 1. After the death of Saul, David returned from his victory over the Amalekites. The Bible speaks in chapter 1 about death. Death of a king, King Saul, and his son, Jonathan. Dealing with the loss of a loved one or a dear friend is not something easy. In the book of 2 Samuel, it begins the first two chapters with David responding to the loss of both Saul and his dear, precious friend, Jonathan. But it's not the end of the story. It's actually the beginning of the story. In 1 Samuel, we actually read and study the life of Saul, the first king of Israel. Now, in 2 Samuel, it's the rule and reign of King David. Oh, there's something very, very special about David, and that is God's anointing upon his life. God is the one that puts his anointing upon each and every one of our lives. And let me say, as I've been reading and studying, praying and seeking the Lord this morning, I just feel in my heart that there are some really important observations to share with you. Number one, God's anointing is powerful. We're going to see in 2 Samuel all of the great victories of this warrior that had been a shepherd boy and would become King David. God's anointing upon our lives, as it's illustrated in the life of David, is so very, very powerful. Number two, God's anointing is not just powerful, but it's intentional. God's anointing has a purpose. God's anointing is powerful and God's anointing is purposeful. God's anointing is not dependent upon our perfection. It doesn't mean that we all of a sudden become perfect, but it does show us God's grace in our lives. The beginning, that is the first 10 chapters of 2 Samuel, records all of the great victories of King David. The Bible takes us and shows us the anointing being poured out on young David. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 16. Samuel took the flask of olive oil he had brought and he began to anoint the young shepherd boy with the oil. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day forward. Now in 2 Samuel, those first 10 verses, chapters, are all about the wars and the battles that this anointed king is going to engage in. And where does the power and the victory come from? It comes from the anointing. In 2 Samuel chapter 8, verse 6, it says, And the Lord gave victories wherever David went. It's inseparable. The powerful anointing of God upon our lives and the victory in every battle that we face. David was a great warrior. He would have victory over the Philistines, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Amalekites, all of the neighboring uh, enemies around the country. God would give him victory. The major characters we'll read and study in 2 Samuel include the life and reign of King David, the story of Bathsheba, and how God will raise up Nathan to speak to the heart. 
of David, and then, of course, the horrific struggle David has with his own biological son named Absalom. We'll read and study about David becoming king over Israel. It all starts when Samuel anoints him. And in the very beginning of the book of 2 Samuel, it's a story of David becoming the anointed king over Judah, just one tribe. But eventually, he'll become king over all the tribes of Israel. It's a very interesting and fascinating observation and study to realize the steps that God takes David to through to become king. Again, he's anointed by Samuel. Secondly, he becomes king over Judah. And thirdly, the United Kingdoms of Israel follow a single king, a monarchy, King David, anointed by God. We recognize his heart and his passion for worship, how he moves the Ark of the Covenant to restore worship to the city of Jerusalem. He stumbles, he makes a few mistakes. It's a fascinating study. And then the great warrior that David becomes. Regrettably, his life becomes, begins to unravel by the 11th chapter of 2 Samuel. He makes terrible uh, choices. The story of Bathsheba, the story of the cover-up. Oh my, unbelievable tragedy. And sin winds up infecting his whole family. His life and his family begin to unravel. One of the interesting things about the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our lives is it doesn't make us perfect. It doesn't mean that all of a sudden we're going to make all of the right choices. And when you study the life of David, he stumbles bringing the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. He stumbles when he makes this terrible choice with Bathsheba. He makes another mistake by counting his men at the very end of the story found in 2 Samuel. We are human. We are sinners saved by grace. And it's God's grace that gives you the anointing of the Holy Spirit today in your life. He gives you a power and he gives you a purpose. It is not dependent upon your perfection. But we can't ignore that our bad mistakes have consequences. And I think the hardest part to recognize in the unraveling of the life of David's family is the enemy came from within. The enemy of the Amalekites, the Moabites, the Philistines, he had great victory over, but the enemy from within the flesh, the sinful nature, he would succumb and it would cause unraveling in his life. Oh, there are so many powerful passages of scriptures as we study Second Samuel. David was anointed as the new king of Judah. Then all of Israel went to David and said, we are your own flesh and blood. In the past, when David was our king, Saul was our king, you were the one who really led the forces. And the Lord told you, you will be the shepherd of my people. You will be Israel's new leader. Second Samuel chapter 5. When your days are over and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up your offspring to succeed you. You will come who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. Your house and your kingdom will be eternal. Your throne will be established forever. Second Samuel chapter seven. It is a prophetic word of the Messiah and the eternal kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Oh, Father, I thank you for the word of God and to be able to every day spend time with you in prayer, in worship. I thank you for the evidence of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we seek you earnestly this morning. Fill the vessel of our heart today with your presence and your power. We realize a busy schedule before us today but we realize that you have purpose every step we take. Oh, use us, use us as great warriors. Let our hearts be in tune as worshipers. As we consecrate ourselves this morning at sunrise, we call upon the name of the Lord. Bless, we pray, this glorious day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. What a beautiful morning. Birds are out today. Oh, glory. So glorious. You be blessed today.